Joining me in the studio today are both Mark Burnett and Roma Downey. I don't know how we got them, but here they are. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming. I would never appear on TV with my wife. Why is that? Because um, <clears throat> she wouldn't want to appear on TV. She'd feel uncomfortable. But you, you seem very comfortable. Are you comfortable? <laughs> Have you been in front of the, the cameras before? Just a few times. You, a few times? Because you're a natural. You're ready to go professional, Roma. I just <laughs> feel that about you. You're ready to make the leap. Yeah. Um, well, listen, it's thrilling to have the two of you here, and it's, I think it's just thrilling as a husband, as part of a marriage, to see a couple that works together the way you do. It's obviously rather a rare thing, and I'm not just talking about producing big things, wonderful things as you do, but just the fact that you get along well enough that you're able to collaborate. Um, most people, and I'm one of them, uh, probably don't know how you met or when you met will either of you tell me yeah uh -oh. we, yeah we met yeah, uh -oh. I, I, what, I, you, I you were his first. parole officer one of those things what happened no not at all no okay but we met i was having a manicure pedicure right and my husband was having a haircut Really? In the same... Um, in one of those frou-frou salons, Mark? <laughs> really? Like, that's right. Yeah, I live Incredible. in Los Angeles. What can I, I say? I picture you going into Rocco's Barbershop. <laughs> we'll, we'll edit that out. Okay, so you, so you literally met. Yeah, our Thanks. eyes met in the mirror. And um, my husband um, left first. And when I was uh, uh, leaving and paying, I asked the receptionist who he was. And mm -hmm. she said, oh, it's funny you should ask who he is because he just asked me who you were. Mm -hmm. hmm, did he know? Well, we know why he asked that because you're a beautiful woman. Why in the world did you want to know who this guy was? Oh, That's what I keep wondering. Isn't that I mean, incredible? Honestly, I score. Did I score or I what? I think you may have. I married Roma I Downey. You, <laughs> you, uh, she took pity on me. You may have, yeah, no. yeah, well. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, it's it's, uh, it's it's just you know one of these eternally perennially sweet things to see a couple that you know obviously loves each other and gets along. But I mean, the idea of collaborating on something as monumental as this Bible mini series that you did. Whose idea was this? Which of you had that idea? Roma brought up first. Uh, we'd seen the idea for a documentary, which was about the Bible, which was really looking for all. What was wrong with the Bible and how to disprove That's the Bible? That's normally what they're looking yes, for. Yes, yes. Yeah. But you know, they, you do know there are dozens of documentaries like that and none of them ever get good ratings, right. just so you know. So trying to disprove the Bible and malign our sacred text doesn't work. Yeah, and it was so here very, we did the opposite. It was very, very upsetting. I just thought, why would anybody waste their time and energy doing this? And then, you know, the more I thought about it and, and sat with it, I thought, well, you know, if you were, why wouldn't you just make the story of the Bible? No one had ever done that. No one had attempted to yeah. tell the story from Genesis through Revelation right. as a TV series. So we talked about that and we prayed about it and we decided that we would do that and do it together. Well, there's a good reason that nobody had ever done it because it's crazy. Yeah. Who would ever do such yeah. a crazy thing? And it was. It was madly complicated to put together yeah. and it has been challenging, but it has been the best of times. Yes, yes. Well, okay, so let me ask you a little bit about, what, 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 have both of you been people of faith your whole lives? Is this something new? Is this something that you dragged him into? How did this happen? Uh, yeah, well, I have been uh, of faith my whole life. I you was raised, raised in a house of prayer, uh -huh. and um, and so you know. And for many years, um, I had played an angel on Touched by an Angel. I don't know anything about that. And <laughs> um, and felt privileged to deliver mm. a message of God's love on a weekly basis. And so this was an opportunity to bring the Bible to the screen. Yeah. And the ar arcing theme that we wanted to make sure that people felt was that it was a love story, because really it is the greatest love story that ever was. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you should get her to help you pitch this or promote yeah. this. She's very good. It's not, not a bad, not a bad idea. In all seriousness. But I, I think mean, it was also say to you. A know, love so, story. Oh. Yeah, and, we've, and we've both you know, grown up with the Bible, but you know, certainly for myself, the last five years or so, we've been swimming in, in an ocean of the Bible and God and love and Jesus every day while making the series and the movie, Son of God. And so for me personally, I started to think more of the Bible as a love story than a rule book 
that's yeah. kind of yelling at me that if I made a mistake, yeah. a lightning bolt is right. about to hit me. And I've completely adjusted, and, you know, and for whatever reason at certain times in your life, but this has been such a blessing to have worked on the Bible series yeah. and now the movie Son of God, which by the way, the movie is such a better experience than the TV series because you see it on this giant screen, you get 5.1 surround sound, you're in community with a couple of hundred other people like going to church. Yeah. The energy in the room, we've now screened the movie you know, for 20 different groups and it's absolutely amazing same result every time. People are just stunned and joyful. It's a perfect movie, by the way. If a believer has a coworker or a family member or a friend who's kind of not sure about their faith mm. or they're on the fence, bring them to the movie with you and go have dinner afterwards and talk about it. It's a great conversation starter. I've actually, I mean, one of the reasons I'm so excited that, uh, that you've done this is because uh, you know, obviously living in New York City, which is just about as secular as Hollywood, people tend not to talk about these kinds of issues. And I always felt that it doesn't matter what you believe, but you ought to at least feel comfortable discussing these things, discussing mm -hmm. the meaning of life, um, the big questions, you know, and, and we avoid that so much. So to have an icebreaker, to have something that begins uh, to draw us into a conversation, that's a big part of the accomplishment of bringing uh, the Bible series yeah, to TV and now right. bringing this just to begin the conversation no matter where somebody's coming from what you said Mark about the Bible not being a rule book most people think of it as a rule book mm -hmm. and they, they just think it's this horrible thing and obviously you saw me at the prayer breakfast I mean that was my topic there's dead religion and then there's this beautiful thing called faith mm. which most people don't know anything about now I, I have to ask you both Hollywood as I just said it's a secular place what what is your sense of the reception of this in, in, in Hollywood or just generally speaking, faith in Hollywood? The well, big I think that our, our experience has been very positive. Mm -hmm. I think that there are a lot more um, people of faith in our community than you might imagine. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel that we have been uh, lifted up as we have uh, moved around when we were out promoting the Bible mm -hmm. series and the movie Son of God, that people are stepping out and and stepping up to us as I imagine maybe they might to returning servicemen and service women mm. of people really being grateful yeah. that that um, that we made the movie, yeah. you know, that we that we got off the couch and heard the call and took action mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. yeah. and worked together to accomplish this. That it is t touching people's lives right. and and to your point, I think that it has encouraged a bigger conversation around yeah. the water cooler yeah. and around the kitchen table within families that people are talking about faith, they're talking about God, they're mm. talking about Jesus. Yeah. And Mark and I have been very encouraged by that. Well, even if you just want to be literate, even if you just want to know about Western civilization, to, ha to have any sense of history, you have to know the Bible. Uh, you don't have to agree with it, but you have to be aware of it. I mean, there's so many references to it. If you read, I mean, most great literature makes some reference. I mean, William Faulkner writes Absalom, Absalom. What, what in the world is he talking about if you don't know that that comes from, you know, uh, Scripture? There's so much, and I think that, you know, in the last, let's say, 40 or 50 years, since the 60s, we've really uh, secularized, the media has become so secular. So it is an extraordinary thing that you're using your success to pull this back in because I clearly there's a huge uh, audience for it. I mean, huge. And what you saw, I mean, an example on the, the Voice, one of our shows, about 400 people were. Were you associated with that? <laughs> yeah. Really? I'm sure you want this to come sometime. Yeah. Um, but the, there's about 400 people work on it, you know, of which, you know, like 50 I'm working with very closely and probably 350 who well, I'm on nodding terms and know everybody but don't hang out with all the yeah. time. Bible comes out at least 50 people come to me privately just to say, thank you. Thank you yeah. so much for telling the story of the Bible. Now, these are people I would never have known were Christians and that went to church. Yeah. Because you just don't ask people those questions in Hollywood, like you said in New York. Well, that's, I mean, that's the problem. So what's Everybody is afraid is, to talk about it. You know, the Bible series, and more importantly, the movie Son of God. It's yeah. on the big screen. It's a standalone story of the story of Jesus. It really is a great conversation starter. It's almost like giving people permission yeah. 
to start conversations yeah. about it, which maybe that was the whole purpose that Roma and I felt the calling to do this. Yeah, well, and Jesus hasn't been on the big screen in a decade yeah. since the Passion of the right. Christ. Well, he's so. been busy with other stuff, obviously. Well, but you know, here was an opportunity to really, for a whole generation mm -hmm. of, of young people also, for kids, we have teenagers at home, you know, that, that gives them, they learn through visual mm -hmm. storytelling. Yeah. And to be able to anchor the Gospels yeah. in, you know, in a, in a film, then go back in to take that information back into reading scripture, back in when yeah. you go to church, it brings an aliveness yeah. and an immediacy to it, you know, and this film is really cool. I mean, our actor is gorgeous, he's heroic, his Diogo Morgado plays yeah. Jesus, amazing, our disciples are... Well, I, okay, I have to ask oh, you, when a, you made this decision, not just casting, but telling the story, now is it, is it the Gospel of John, which Gospel do you use, or it, use all of them? It's an amalgam of the Gospels. As long as you don't put the Gospel of Thomas in there, tell me it's not in there, <laughs> no. good. Okay, so, but the thing is, how do you make that decision artistically to tell that story? I mean, if you think back, I think, you know, Max von Sydow portraying uh, Jesus in, what was it? The, the, the Robe, told. or The Greatest Story Ever Told. The Greatest and Story Ever Told. All of these historic depictions, you know, uh, um, with John over, over Lane the years. As the centurion. And John Lane's famous end. line was. Uh, was it? Truly, that truly man is the son, was of God. son of God. That was an incredible John Wayne. If I close my <laughs> eyes, go do it again. Okay, so, yeah. but I mean, the idea that we have John Wayne is standing there as a centurion. But the thing is, Hollywood has told the story over and over. Not so much recently. Of course, we had uh, the Mel Gibson version. How did you find your way in, artistically? What, what? I guess, what was your goal? Well, How, you know, who, who is this Jesus? Well, well the, for the whole story, first of all, you have to realize the disciples were regular guys. Most of them were rough fishermen, uh, uh, apart from Judas, who was kind of more educated and wealthy from Kerryat. But they didn't know they were in the Bible. They're following what they, they think. They didn't know they were in the Bible. They did not know sure they were in the that? Bible at the time. Um, <laughs> they were following a charismatic leader who later they realized was the Son of God. Yeah. But imagine the fear. Mm. Everywhere they're going, there's controversy. And the controversy grows and grows and grows. And eventually Jesus says, we're going to Jerusalem. And they're like, what? Jerusalem? Yeah. That's so dangerous. And they're full of fear. And we cut across that with the other two, two elements of the story, which are the temple authorities, who are A, not believing this is the Son of God, B, fearing the Romans are going to really crack down, close the temple and kill them all. And the Romans, who are just so fed up with all these Jewish people, I mean, the, the disciples and Jesus are Jews, you know. What? A, a lo along with the, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And the Romans just want everybody to behave yeah. and collect taxes. So there's a triangular drama going on. It's very, very tense. Yeah. And the only... Uh, figure in the entire movie who knows what's happening is Jesus. And of course, it's this collision course of Jerusalem, right to the, you know, and you fell in love with him as he's healed people. He is brought um, life back to the dead. Um, he has gone in and, and not defended himself in a trial. And you're watching this story unfold and then we deal with the resurrection, mm -hmm. we deal with the ascension, the Great Commission, and the movie ends with John on Patmos. A and it's beautiful, and people have just sit there afterwards and think, wow, that's our story. That's our Lord and Savior. And it's beautiful to exhibit that in two hours, 15 minutes, as a grand narrative, yeah. as a meta right. narrative. Well. Uh, unfortunately, we're out of time. I have to say I'm just so grateful uh, that you're both here, but more grateful really that uh, you were willing to step out, tell this great story. I cannot wait to see it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to tell everyone I know to see it, and I'll tell everyone I don't know to see it, just because I think th it is the greatest story ever told. Just for the story, it's worth seeing. So thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you. you.